Yes, 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 who got brands talking? Brandlive.co.za. And it's a very good afternoon on this Wednesday. It's five o'clock, and we're on Brand Live Online Radio. My name is Errol Felix, and I'd like to welcome you to Green for Life, our environmental segment. Um, we have a surprise guest in the studio, but what I'd like to do is just um, continue. Um, with last week's topic, which was conservation, conservation versus environment, where I was um, basically intimating that environment equals life. And if we could just go over those pillars of environment again. Number one was awareness or birth, which includes environmental education. This is where the, the individual is exposed to nature and other matters environment. I'm reminded of a lovely um, story of the Bushman, or the San, or the Khoisan, if you will, that my friend David Kreper, who is now late, um, he said to me they prefer to be called Bushman. He said, you know what? Um, what I saw was that the way the little Bushman child is from the time that it can sit up and start to walk, it is being educated environmentally especially by its primary caretaker, which is the mother. It is um, exposed to everything. The mother, it's not just a child sitting in the sand and uh, left to its own devices. The mother is continually um, letting it, allowing it to feel, allowing it to taste, allowing it to see, and specifically showing them which um, of the um, anything that is in, in the area, whether it's plants or or. Uh, anything that they find like a stone that is not acceptable or poisonous, etc. So from a very young age, they are being educated environmentally. Then the next aspect, the next pillar is interaction uh, or utilization, where we start using, touching what it is that is in our immediate environment. And naturally, of course, because of numbers of people, we tend to overuse or abuse what we have. This obviously leads to unsustainable utilization. Um, if we take that onto a higher level, we start looking at um, areas like, like poaching or really just where um, certain vegetation in one particular habitat is being overused by communities, for argument's sake, in that area which would lead to um, unsustainability of that resource. That means we uh, conservation now stepped in, uh, steps in, which is what I refer to as the plaster, uh, really. It is to say, guys, we now need to do something. There's a hurt. What are we going to do about it? Within that, there's also the um, educating aspect of letting us see that unless we start caring for what it is that we have, we are going to lose that unless we start living sustainably and in harmony with especially nature, but everything, in fact, that is around us, we will not have anything to hand over. There will be no legacy for um, generations to follow. And that really um, unpacks the, the definition of sustainability. Um, following sustainable living, it now leads to empowerment of the individual, and we start... Um, looking at what it is around us in a different way. We start appreciating what we have. That leads to spiritual growth and finally to the final pillar which is enlightenment and then the, uh, the cycle then starts again. So that was really just a recap of last week's topic. Now very, very exciting. This week we're going to be talking about zoos and we have in studio Jenny Moodley who's the spokesperson for Johannesburg City Parks and Zoos. Jenny, of course, is, uh, I don't want to use the word old, <laughs> but uh, we have we have known each other for quite a while. Welcome to Green for Life, Jenny. Thank you so much for hosting us. Uh, as you can imagine, I feel like some of the trees in our city. I've been with City Parks for some time, but hopefully I'm able to share some of that knowledge that's been gathered, some of the learnings, and uh, it's good to that the zoo now is part of Johannesburg City Parks. Uh, it gives us an opportunity to streamline our uh, service offering, 
to look at lessons learned, uh, to utilize resources more effectively, and mostly to share the knowledge base that we have in the city of Joburg. It's been for a while now that, that the zoo has been under Joburg City Parks, right? Quite right. It's over three years. Uh, the integration has happened. Uh, we had original or initial teething problems. But I must say that uh, there is consensus there was that there was a need for these uh, similar services to come together. And the integration currently is running effectively and smoothly. And we're hopeful that uh, that we bring a better offering to the city of Joburg and its residents. Fantastic. We look forward to it. Now, one of the um, current issues, of course, was um, how the zoo has been affected by the recent flash floods. So that is really something I'd like to unpack. But before we get there, I would like to introduce what I'd like to call a news package yes. within Green for Life. So um, I leave it up to the zoo now to tell us what, are, what is the news, a little news items that has happened over the past uh, week at the zoo. Well, interesting, uh, you know, we in the tail end of the holiday seasons, of course, we're planning our holidays, but uh, we we more importantly need to make sure that the, that our animals are cared for. So some of the most recent uh, happenings has been uh, that we've hosted a few concerts together with some of our partners, making sure that we increase the number of feet into the park. Uh, the uh, parking area is on its third story, so we're hopeful that residents living in the vicinity of the zoo will no longer be hampered or hindered uh, in terms of access uh, by the visitors. So we're hoping that that um, parking area will be ready to be launched in February next year. Uh, we also found while during the construction phase we unearthed uh, 50 year remnants uh, we were we were hopeful that it was going to be something that uh, that would take us back over 150 years <laughs> but that was it would wishful, have been exciting <laughs> it was just wishful thinking it was you know there was a lot of uh, bottles and jars and so on and it was interesting to see how we acquired uh, refuse or our, our uh, waste at that time versus how we yes. generate it in heaps and loads currently. So um, that uh, delayed the project a little bit, but we're good to go. Um, when do you expect the project to be completed? The parking lots currently... Uh, Visitors are accessing the zoo via the Jan Smuts entrance and, of course, further up along uh, Earl's World, which is uh, in Saxon World. Uh, but we hope that the parking area will be concluded, construction will be concluded by late February. Great. And um, there is enough information for visitors in terms of where it is that they would be able to park. Absolutely. I think uh, the informal car guards are becoming quite problematic. We've had residents complain about them. We've had visitors, our patrons complain. Um, but once the parking area is fully functional, rest assured that that problem will be dealt with. Great. Well, I'd love to hear more. We're going to be taking a short break. 27 Boxes is a realization of edgy design and practical implementation. A radical departure from the shopping malls of our generation, yet not a return to the high streets of our youth. 27 Boxes showcases the best of a shopping center set in a garden, surrounded by the bohemian suburb that is Mulville. 27 Boxes Shop, Play, Eat. And welcome back to Green for Life. Of course, we are on brand live online radio where you as any company, institution, um, you're allowed to come in and unashamedly plug your brand mm -hmm. for a short price, of course, a small one, sorry. Jenny Moodley is in the studio with us. She's the spokesperson for Johannesburg City Parks and Zoos. Jenny, please tell us what happened during the flash flooding at the zoo. Yes, with over 100 millimeters of rain, as you can imagine, the zoo was in the heart of some of the problems. Uh, the first uh, we were alerted was when the wall along Jan Smuts, which is the main perimeter wall of the zoo, had collapsed. Uh, it was being uh, literally washed away onto oncoming vehicles along Jan Smuts. 
So, so there was uh, a, a lot of emergency uh, units that were deployed. Uh, the big concern was around the animals, their safety, of course, making sure that the predator animals, your, your lions, your Thank cheetahs, you. and so on, were their enclosures were intact. Thankfully, we have a, a secondary perimeter wall uh, at the zoo, which means that uh, even your more domesticated animals, your antelope, your zebras, and so on, are still retained within the zoo, even in, in an emergency. So that wall was intact. Um, uh, we then got out emergency services, service providers, the vets even, uh, to uh, start the reinstatement of the outer wall that had collapsed. Uh, but more importantly, we had to make sure that the enclosures of all our animals were intact. So we had our shek, which is our safety units, uh, like I said, the vets and our staff on hand to quickly prioritize in terms of which enclosures had to be uh, verified. And, uh, and then we moved on to the uh, uh, other enclosures. We did have problems with uh, some of the enclosures. We were concerned about uh, uh, some of our chimps as well. Uh, but like I said, contingencies are in place. In, in the event of any emergency in the city of Joburg, uh, there was a spate of inquiries coming not only from regionally and locally. We had our international partners that were quite concerned. Absolutely. Um, which was which was good to see that sort of community um, making sure that the animals and their well-being was yes. being prioritised. Um, again, uh, the following day, thankfully, the rains receded and we were able to assess the uh, the, the impact of the floods. Um, of course, we all woke up to the terrible news that there were lives lost and so on. So we had to make sure that our animals were in place and intact. Did, did the zoo lose any animals? Thankfully not. Yeah, uh, right. I, I stand corrected. We did have uh, some of the pumps in the... Uh, animals of the Amazon enclosure uh, some of the fish in the aquarium were lost uh, due okay. to the pumps that were were flooded so th thankfully we have a second species that uh, the, the same species is taken care of elsewhere in the zoo and we were able to replace uh, the species that were lost but it was it was a handful of uh, fish that we'd lost okay which of the animals created sort of the most panic <laughs> or anxiety yes of course we have our cheetahs and our lions and uh, we have pythons and uh, you know uh, this th we we have a, a huge offering at the zoo we have species from uh, the central americas they're indigenous uh, some of which you would not even see if you entered the amazon and so on they just rare uh, that rare so having said that we had to protect these very not only valuable but expensive uh, animal yes. uh, uh, collection uh, but just as important as we had to make doubly sure that all enclosures were intact uh, the, certainly you know we've had previous reports of um, on thankfully it's John some some other mediums where we found that people were animal lions were roaming in suburbs and so on on previous occasions only to find it was a cat a spotted cat <laughs> um, so uh, residents were very concerned and uh, we had to respond to that with the proper information and communication going out on all uh, local radio and uh, uh, channels. Um, but just as important was that it was learning for us. You know, we we realized that there's a massive community out there yes. ready to help in the event of any disaster. Precisely. So besides the concern, mm. there was also the willingness to Absolutely. pitch in. And, and we've seen this previously with the uh, with. Uh, Joburg residents. Uh, we had strike action at one point, it was a few, uh, over six months ago, and we had a spate of phone calls with people saying, I want to give off my time, I want to volunteer, uh, I'll come across with my kids, we'll feed the animals. It sometimes gets a little bit uh, uh, cumbersome yes. trying to organize, <laughs> but I can assure you that I personally received over 100 requests uh, during that time. So we had to lay residents concerns that yes. there was no need for residents to get in their cars come to the zoo we had it all under control so that happened we will continue to monitor and assess the the, the any rains uh, t you know, that happen in the city of Joburg um, or any natural disaster 
Yes. And so we hopeful that uh, we and and uh, like I said, we were immediately able to deploy the relevant teams. Fantastic. We, we were willing to go on site even after hours. Yes. So what you're saying is that there's a state of readiness for uh, Any whatever there might be. Yes, uh, covering um, eventualities. Um, uh, absolutely. Which is fantastic. And and I think yes. Rest assured, residents of Joburg and all your uh, listeners, that we absolutely will have got not just a uh, single enclosure for some of our more uh, dangerous animals, there, there's uh, fences that are monitored electronically and so on. So any breach in that fence, we are Im alerted uh, yes. by, by the relevant authority in the, at the Joburg Zoo. Uh, Jenny, just in terms of that concern, which is internationally and locally all over the show, doesn't that also point to the importance of zoos? Very much so. I think, you know, the Joburg Zoo is firstly one of the uh, only places, and from what we gathered globally, where you can have a big five experience on your doorstep in the heart of an urban setting. So not many towns have a zoo because they just can't accommodate that space uh, globally. Uh, so that's one. But the second is our partnerships with uh, institutions like Fitz University and their veterinary sciences units, uh, uh, the University of Pretoria and their health sciences and so on. We're finding that these, our hospital, which is award-winning, by the way, the veterinary hospital at the Joburg Zoo, is uh, an institution of learning where we're able to do the autopsies. We, you remember we lost one of our polar bears, the last polar bear in, uh, in Africa. And we were able to let students who would probably be unable to travel to the more colder parts of this planet and basically um, get them to um, Earth, actually, to get them to, to come across and watch firsthand on what polar bears were, what were the concerns in terms of the autopsy, could it be diet related uh, and as small as it sounds our, our new hospital will also be able to bring in learners and we have a massive looking uh, s a window where you would be able to see an autopsy take place without interfering with the vet's work. That's really amazing but that takes us to the four cornerstones of the zoo. I'd like to talk about that after the short break. You're listening to brandlive.co.za, an industry first in the world of internet radio. Not only are we an internet radio station, we are an internet radio platform for your brand. So why not expose your brand to potentially thousands of listeners and improve your customer relationships and brand equity with podcasts and live broadcasts? Be sure to check brandlive.co.za for more information brandlive.co.za harnessing the power of internet radio so we're back on green for life uh, welcome if you've just uh, 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 patched into our uh, radio show we're chatting to jenny woodley who is the spokesperson for the johannesburg city parks and zoos and she's been talking to us about the importance of zoos so jenny to continue what what would you say are the four cornerstones of um, the zoo if we're talking other than just people coming to view animals on weekends? Well, we talk about education and awareness. It's a key priority. We have the Masimbazani uh, project, which means we bus indigent children coming from the outer skirts of Johannesburg, your areas like your Alexandras, your Soweto's, Orange Farm, Deep Slits and so on. And we, uh, there's no access fee. We work through the schools. And children come out there not only to be exposed in terms of animal behaviors, habitats, uh, do not, you know, as basic as do not kill a snake, uh, what the difference is between a non-venomous and a venomous snake, and so on. Uh, and, and even to deal with factors such as I'm scared of a snake, you know, where children get to engage, touch, to feel, and to get those their sensories going around animals, and just to build green conscious uh, future uh, youth and future leaders because the, it's very telling and it's indicative of uh, the high levels of ownership in a society in terms of the way we care for our animals, the way we care for our environment and so on. So we use it as a platform or as a vehicle to talk to learners uh, through this program where we pay for the transport, 
you the, the, the learners access the zoo at no cost and where possible we even provide a little lunch pack. I would almost say that zoos should be a young person's first port of call in terms of one, environmental information and number two, um, after that, before you even think of going to a nature reserve, Kruger National Park, etc. Very much so. It's a, it, we, we actually have an edutainment because it's easier to talk to children from, a, from an entertainment perspective sometimes, keep them engaged. So we have an edutainment uh, program that not only brings the children and we don't focus on the hardcore stuff of con- conservation and sustainability and so on, but we look at where they can get their hands dirty, for example, in developing their own food garden at the zoo. Uh, we show them the water quality, so they come out there and host, uh, do water quality tests with a test kit and so on, so they could see uh, in terms of water quality at the zoo. Um, it, it's It's so critical that we nurture our young through this platform because only then can you really say that you can go out there and engage with the environment in a more uh, a responsible way because yes. if, if you understand that that piece of packet or that uh, coke can that you throw out the window ends up in the stream or ends up at the zoo when you dispose it and in the mouths of an elephant for example yes. that could impact on well, that could result in the death of that particular animal. So again, a huge appeal we make to learners and so on, uh, that when they do visit places like the Joburg Zoo, that they exercise the necessary caution, refrain from littering, observe the, the bylaws and the rules of these facilities, understand that animals are not in a position to put their hands up and scream, Yes, you yes. littering my space or you compromising my health. That's you know. right. The idea then really is that they leave the zoo with more than just the entertainment value. Absolutely. Uh, uh, that's critical, and that's the whole basis of the program, is to uh, use them, uh, to basically educate them, but to also use them in terms of a, a messaging conduit to their parents and to adults. Yes. We know that when children go home, they're happy to share what had happened Hello, Dad. I've had a visit uh, to the Joburg Zoo, and did they you know? Did you know? <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we were also schooled not to litter. Yes. And so, when even parents digress, you quickly have uh, the kid calling these parents to account. Yes. Now, quickly, just getting back to that entertainment value, we're now approaching year end. Mm-hmm. Surely, there must be lots of initiatives that the zoo has. Yes, absolutely. We're one of the only facilities to be open over all the public holidays, which means that you do have something to do in Joburg, uh, especially if you last visited the zoo when you were five years old with your parents. It's time to take your children there. Uh, and they've grown up, and let's have some grown-up children in the, in the at the zoo as well. So this weekend, of course, we have the official, uh, official uh, tree switch-on. So this is the big... A tree, yes, the hospice tree of life. Always a big thing, yes. Yes, and we hopeful that we would get the relevant principals in the city of Joburg to address uh, residents in the city of Joburg, use it as a platform to wish them well over the festive season and to travel well, and of course to comply with the city's bylaws by being safe on the road. Uh, and so that's one. And um, we then have uh, some other partnerships with the Carols by Candlelight events uh, with uh, with uh, external partners. We have a school's holiday program where children can come in, uh, be part of a volunteer program. They get a certificate at the end. Uh, please visit us on our Joburg, J, uh, Joburg, um, jhbcityparks.com website where you can complete the relevant forms, uh, get your child to, if, then, if you're not going away, to get involved in giving a little bit back to the zoo and to the animals that we have at the zoo. Um, there's so many interesting initiatives. You know. Do you still do the night tours? Yes, night tours. Thank you for triggering all these excitements. <laughs> Clearly, you've been to the zoo, Edel, in the recent uh, recent years. We have the night tours, uh, and so you many animals, as you know, are nocturnal beings. So, of course, uh, they might not be as active in the day. That's another thing. A lot of people that visit the, do ex- uh, the, the zoo expect to come out there and see a performing elephant or a chimpanzee that's <laughs> yes. going to be doing tricks. Zoos are not for that. 
zoos. Um, these are not, many of these animals are nocturnal, so during the day they pref prefer to rest or even stay inside their enclosures. And for us, it's about an uh, education experience. So yes, campouts are going to. We urge you. I know that um, dads come out there with their boys. They bring out their own uh, camp gear, so you can spend a that night at the zoo. Amazing, amazing with the night tours and having a camp out at the same time. Uh, we also are looking for uh, the adults that have a fear of uh, the slippery, slithery ones. <laughs> so we will be hosting over the weekends uh, touch and feel. And we hopeful that many of these adults that are petrified of snakes get to realize that they're harmless, especially the non-venomous ones. I've had my experience where you've had these uh, colors of orange and blacks and greens and so on wrapped around you. Yes. And you realize that, you know, once they you way past the, the touching feeling, you get a good sense of, of that they, they're harmless. So again, our, the message there is to reinforce that uh, uh, they more scared of you than you scared of them, and of course there's the there's the uh, research, beautiful research that happens at zoos. You have the hospital, as you mentioned earlier. Um, what about volunteerism? Do you encourage that? Yes, uh, in terms of our conservation programs, firstly we're part of the Wattle Crane and the Blue Crane, an international program to conserve uh, and puppet rear these uh, these birds. And then, of course, we have the whole uh, education as well. Fantastic. Well, if you've been listening, that was a beautiful, information-packed half an hour with Jenny Moodley of the Johannesburg City Parks and Zoos. I'm Edward Felix. I'm signing out until next week for Green for Life. Have you ever thought of the power of talk radio and what it can do for your business? Well, brandlive.co.za has been developed with that in mind and brings you an international first. The brandlive.co.za internet radio platform gives businesses a new voice and opportunity to change the conventional communication platform that a newsletter represents. Facilitated by leading industry experts, the brandlive.co.za platform offers a high-quality digital talk radio medium for companies to communicate their new developments, create customer-centric radio content, develop an added value in terms of client relations, and create a better flow in terms of feedback and interactivity to their existing customer base and market. Simultaneously, the platform can also open a brand or business to a new group of potential customers. Technology is constantly shaping the way we communicate and consume information which presents your business with a simple and affordable way to address your customer or client in a modern, multifaceted setting. Internet radio is now available for your business, a powerful corporate branded tool to complement your existing communication platforms. In today's competitive market, you need to use every tool available to retain and cultivate loyal customers. Online corporate branded radio offers you an exciting range of communication tools uniquely tailored to your brand and addressing your communication challenges. With the brandlive.co.za radio platform, you have the power to brand your business in the way you like. You are able to develop content with your own production team and have the opportunity to interact with your customers in real time on issues such as quality assurance, customer service and any other operational matters. Brandlive.co.za. Now your brand has a voice.